Welcome to another edition of If This Car Could Talk. We appreciate you checking in today. As you probably know, we feature cars with intriguing stories, and the one we have for you today is no exception. It's all about a young man whose first car turned out to be pretty special. A 1968 Buick GS400 hardtop captured the heart of a kid from Pennsylvania who had acquired it in his formative years. But you know the old story. At one point it seemed more practical to sell it than to try to keep it and store it for a later time. Well, our hero Al sold the car and lost track of it for over three decades. He thought about it often, but figured it was most likely chewed up by the tin worm, a common malady on rust belt vehicles. But one day the car god smiled on our friend. A similar car was spotted by someone he knew, and it was still in the old neighborhood. Could that be the car, and is it for sale? Some detective work and a few phone calls got Al to talking with the current owner. The Buick was in remarkably good condition and was for sale. Follow along now as Al explains how he was able to get the car back. It's an incredible story and also an inspiring one. If you had a car you regrettably sold years ago, maybe it's still out there. Leave a comment about the car or truck you let get away from you and give this story a thumbs up. Now, let's go for a ride. Hi, I'm Al Bacaro from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Live in Sun City, Arizona. My car is a 68 Buick Grand Sport 400 four speed. I bought the car in 1975 before I could even drive it. Uh, talked to my dad, did some grass cutting, busting tables, made some money to buy the car. My dad said, sure, let's buy it and fix it up. So found a car, bought it, couldn't drive it. He used to drive it to work. My sister used to drive it to work and we fixed the car up. So when I turned 16, I was able to drive it. I drove it through high school and after school, after high school, redid the car, made it really nice and sold it. Regretted it the day after I sold it. Fast forward, um, the guy that I sold it to lived about an hour away. Um, six years later, my cousin gets married, moves to that area, calls me up and says, hey, I saw your old GS sitting in the driveway. I said, if you ever see it again, stop. Well, he never saw the car again. Um, so this was going way back. So I started, always wondered what happened to the car. Um, so last year, I started digging around a little bit. So my cousin still lives there. So I call him up. I said, hey, do you remember where you saw that car? <clears throat> he said, yeah, I drive past her every day for the last 30 years. So I says, can you get me the address? He said, sure. So the next day, he gives me the address. So I Google it. There's 
a utility trailer sitting in the driveway. I blow it up, has a phone number on it, some home remodeling. So I call the number, guy answers, and I tell him, hey, I got a question, but don't hang up on me. It's kind of crazy, but I sold a car to a guy 40 years ago that I believe may have lived there. I said, how long have you lived there? He said, I've only been here 15 years. I said, well, you're probably not going to help me then. He said, I rent this house. He said, so when he says, when I moved in, my landlord had a car sitting in the garage that he pulled out of the garage and he put it across the street in his sister's house. I said, do you have any idea what it was? He said, nah, no idea. He says, I'm not going to give you his phone number. He says, but I'll call him and, and I'll tell him. <clears throat> I said, okay. So he calls him and he says, hey, John, I have some crazy guy on the phone looking for a car that he sold a long time ago, thinks it might have been you. And so they, they chatted for a minute and he says, yep, that was me. I bought that car from him way back. He says, give him my phone number. He says, I'd love to talk to him. So <clears throat> he calls me back, gives me his phone number. So I call him and he's laughing when I called him because he couldn't believe that we were talking, you know, so, so many years later. So we chatted for a while and, and, uh, and I asked him, I said, what, what did you ever do with this car? He says, I still have it. I'm like, are you kidding me? He said, nope, I still have it. He says, sitting in a garage. He says, haven't touched it for a long time. Um, I'm like, oh, my goodness. So we talked about it a little bit. I said, if you ever want to sell it, I'd be interested in buying it back. He said, well, he said, I was thinking about it. He said, but it was winter time back in, in the Pittsburgh area. And so we, we talked a few times over the winter and then spring came and, and I asked him, I, I called him and I said, Hey, what are we doing? And he said, yeah, he said, my wife and I talked about it. We're going to sell it. So <clears throat> there it is. So we, we, we come across, uh, come up with an agreement and I says, Hey, you mind if I send my cousin, and my buddy over to take a look at it? He said, no. So we set up a time and um, both both my cousin and my buddy knew the car. Uh, my friend Glenn, we we grew up from babies together next door to each other, always messing around with cars. So him and my cousin went over to look at it and they went over the car and says, oh, it's it's all there. I mean, it's got a Pennsylvania inspection sticker on it that was 35 years old. So. It has sat for a while. Um, they went over it, solid frame, floorboards, trunk, everything good. Body was rough, paint was rough. Um, so we decided to buy the car. Um, I had another friend of mine go over and get it, take it home, um, went over it, got it running, and he aired up the tires. We did some normal things, fuel, fuel pump, radiator, and got the car running and then shipped it to Arizona. And there it sits. We were able to determine that it only had 17,000 miles put on it from when I sold it 42 years ago. So car was just as I sold it. John hadn't done anything to it other than a few things, but he drove it and enjoyed it for a few years and then parked it. You know, I'm so grateful that he decided to sell it back. You know, it was just, just couldn't have been better. Couldn't have been better timing. Um, I hope he's still happy that he sold it to me, but I'm happy. Well, we're going to go over it. Um, I plan on doing the interior and the body, um, paint it, and make a nice driver out of it. That's, that's going to be my semi-retirement project. Now that I have a little bit more time to work on it. So that's the plan. It would have been a part already, but my wife wouldn't let me touch it until after good guys. So that's, what, that's why it's still sitting there and why we were able to do this video. So thanks to her too.
and for putting up with me. Well, you know what? I've I've talked to John a couple of times since I bought it, you know, and I felt kind of bad the first time I talked to him because I didn't know how he was going to feel about it, you know. But he's pretty happy. I think he he told me he says if if we're going to sell it, we're glad that you got it back, you know what I mean? So so I think that's cool. You know, I feel like I got a new friendship out of it, you know, and. Uh, and I, I want to keep in touch with them. Al's story is so much fun. If you enjoyed it and you're not yet a subscriber, please consider doing so for many more great car stories just like this one. Speaking of noteworthy car stories, next week's featured 1969 Chevrolet Impala SS427 will surely bring a smile to your face. Its owners who may be familiar to you from a past video we did on their 1963 Chevy Corvair in episode 91, has completely restored this car as a tribute to his father, from whom he learned about cars and became a car guy. See you next week.